The desert is the most desolate part of the world, which for so many years have become stripped of vegetation and surface water. Therefore, life in the desert is harsh and mostly does not exist. There are several deserts around the world, but the Sahara Desert is the most active, constantly expanding and encroaching up on all life around it. The Sahara Desert is the world's biggest hot desert, covering up around 12,000 square miles of land in northern Africa. The desert is a major contributor to the problematic warming of the Earth's climate. Will you invest your money in the Sahara Desert in order to save mankind? That is exactly what this scientist wants you to do. Meet Dr. Newton Jubna, a solar engineer born in Nigeria and trained in the United Kingdom. Dr. Jubna is a delegate to the Global Conferences in Climate Change in Kyoto, Bangladesh, Copenhagen, Cancun and the future conference scheduled in South Africa for 2012. We spoke with Dr. Jubna in Cancun after the COP16 conference, where his reforestation project in the Sahara Desert has been adopted as Africa's position for solutions to control global warming. Dr. Newton, again here in Cancun, um, working on the climate change problems that is taking over all our world. The issues and the matters that were touch with Kyoto Protocol have changed in a certain way. Yes. What's your feeling uh, that exact moment that we have and what we have earned here in Cancun conference? First of all, I'd like to thank you for having me on your program. Um, it's been a long journey um, because as you said, the whole journey started really from Kyoto. Even before Kyoto, we had a number of pre summits. So it's been a very rewarding experience because the, the, the global community have come to realize how important this issue of climate change is, the implications it will have to the entire planet. Here, these last years, we have been affected by big storms and very hot seasons and dry seasons. You already have lived um, like drying of the of lagoons and climate change much much stronger than us. How does climate change affect the people? Does people fight between themselves? Migrate? What? How does it affect people? Right now, the Sahara Desert is encroaching on almost all the neighboring countries bordering the Sahara Desert claiming uh, farmlands and claiming hamlets. People have not been able to combat this encroachment. And of course with the encroachment comes desertification. And the rate with which this is moving has brought about migration of the people to lands where they can find some greenery. And by migrating to just anywhere where they can find greenery for, for their animal herds, for them to practice their normal way of life, which is basically farming, means encroaching on other people's land to a point where we are beginning to have series of conflicts. From the 16 conflicts that we have in Africa today, 11 of them are as a result of migration. People migrating into their farmland, their, their 
uh, their green areas. And when people migrate into your farmland, just because they want to graze their animal heads, what do you do? You fight back. And before you know it, those little fights escalate into civil war. And so that, that is part of the problem that, that I, I have tried to address in various summits. So um, it's not the, the uh, religion's war? No, you see, well, I, 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 let me just say this, because I have lived amongst Muslims and Christians all over Africa. I don't know any Christian that is going to take up, take up arm against a Muslim because he's a Muslim. And I don't know any Muslim. I have not come across any Muslim that will take up arms against a Christian because he's a Christian. No. All these whole thing centers around poverty and economy. It's, it's a little bit of politics in it. There's, there's no doubt. Everybody had to have thought, thought that uh, it's a religion problem. Now you have you are looking this as a different way in a different yes. perspective. Can you please explain in short words? Yes. And I mean the conflicts are the most of the conflicts have nothing to do with religion. They're mainly they're all coming out of economy and poverty. When your land is invaded by migrants being driven away from their farmland by encroachment of the desert, where do they go to? They go to an area where they can find some greenery to graze their cattle, to look for water, and then to look for a place where they can even put up their own farmlands. And if for any reason they encroach upon somebody's land, what does that person do? He fights back. And before you know it, all these little fights turn into civil war. But unfortunately, the security organizations have always looked for an easy answer to any conflict by calling it a religious crisis because sometimes it is between a, some Christian community and some Muslim community. But what brought about the famine? What brought about the, the droughts that rendered the people homeless, that rendered the people, that brought immense poverty to them? In most cases, it is desertification. You see it in Chad, you see it in Sudan, you see it in Niger, you see it in Burkina Faso, you see it in parts of Nigeria, and also in Mali. You see immense poverty caused by desertification, the encroachment of the desert that, that has deprived the people of their farmland. And a lot of people will tell you that majority of the nomads, the Bedouins, the Tuaregs, not even majority, 100% of them depend on their land to survive. And when their land can no longer provide for them, when their land can no longer hold water for them, and when their land can no longer provide agricultural products for them because of desertification, what do they do? And my fear, and the fear of a lot of people, which has also been highlighted in Cancun Club 16, is that there is going to be donor fatigue. What I mean by donor fatigue is you have humanitarian crisis in Niger, or in Ethiopia, or in Chad, or in Darfur, in Sudan, and people pour, bring, bring in their aids to assist these countries. Most of the places where these aids are coming from are going to get tired of bringing in aids. And when they get tired, what happens? What is going to happen to over 26 million Africans that are likely to starve to death in the coming years? So I started a massive campaign uh, to bring the awareness of the 15 countries bordering the Sahara Desert. 
I traveled all through all these countries to talk to the various governments, the various civil society organizations, and the various NGOs to let them know that we have a catastrophe pending. When, after doing this, there was this question of, so what do we do about it? And of course, I, even though I'm a scientist, but I didn't quite know, have an answer to that. So I had to go back to the university in Israel to study the science of gasification. And it was after that, that I started a number of pilot projects in Africa to show how you can reclaim uh, the land from the deserts. And fortunately for me, most of the pilot projects I carried out on the fringes of the Sahara Desert were successful. People have come to see that you can now recover. Can you tell me an example of one of yeah. them? I, by building Wall of Tree projects, I call them Wall of Trees. Where? By, where? where in, the, in some northern parts of Nigeria, in Chad and in Niger. What we do is build the wall of trees, combine uh, what we call sunbreakers with energy trees and agricultural trees. Why agricultural trees like mangoes, guavas, cashew nuts and oranges? Why do we combine that with the desert fighting trees? It's because if you don't give the local communities some incentive to hold, they will not settle and help you with nurturing of those trees. But if you give them those agricultural trees, they have something with which to hold on to. And by so doing, they will help you in nurturing the trees that will stop the desert from encroaching. So we built a number of those pilot projects all over the, or on the fringes of the Sahara Desert. And you know what we did? Before we started any particular pilot project, we, we drill a borehole, sometimes between 200 and 250 meters deep, to find water. And you know in the desert, water is like gold. So if you give the communities water, you give them agricultural trees, you educate them about the consequences of not nurturing the trees you are planting to protect the desert from encroaching, once you do all those, they come on board with you so that they too will become the custodians of that project and look after it for you. Because what, why, why some of these projects failed in the past? Well, governments will come and plant trees, go away, nobody will look after those trees. They don't integrate the community. Uh, even when they mature, they cut them down and use them as energy. But by involving the community, going into some kind of partnership and collaboration with them, they become your partners and they help you because what are they going to gain from it? They're going to get, gain agricultural trees and they're going to gain water. So we've gone a bit further by building a cottage industry in few places. Cottage industry that will process the neem trees. The desert fighting trees are mainly neem trees. And you know you can produce oil, detergent, and soap from neem seeds. Mm -hmm. So when the seeds now mature, we even trained the women on how to crush the neem seeds and produce soap, energy, and oil from it. It's so, a complete industry. Yeah. So you are developing an industry. But then in addition to all that, we use the school, we build most of these pilot projects al uh, along secondary schools, where you have secondary schools. And we get the secondary school children to participate in the nurturing of the children. So that they can take it to the next generation. So after all that experience, there was need for me to start documenting this whole thing into a book. 
And then in addition to that, this was also what I presented during the CAP 16 meeting, is the Bridging the Sahara Desert project. It's a proposal on how to save the continent, recover the land that has been encroached upon, stop the encroachment from happening, and and bring about the movements of goods and services between the north and south of the Sahara Desert. I think about it. 